Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. So, uh, for those of you that are new here, my name is Dr. Ray and that was Sable. Uh, and I'm a small animal practitioner and uh, this is my channel where we go over some questions that you guys have related to pet food. We try to learn all that we can so that we make good decisions and we don't buy our pets uh, crap that the big companies just suck us into with their marketing. Sometimes too, if I see cool things in my general practice, I share those with you too. So today is not necessarily going to be a food review, which is what we have traditionally been doing, but I wanted to answer a question that I thought was a good one. And the question was, what is the difference between a food that is marketed as a sensitive skin or a sensitive stomach um, and an actually prescription GI food or a prescription skin food? And so that's a really good question and I'm going to answer that today. I might pull a few bags to kind of illustrate um, the point. We're going to jump into that here right now. So the main difference between a bag that is just marketed as a sensitive skin or a sensitive stomach versus a prescription um, food that is a sensitive skin or a sensitive stomach or a, they usually don't um, call them that. They usually have a specific name. So like uh, if it's the Hills brand, it'll be their ID for their sensitive stomach. Or if it is the... Um, Purina, it's going to be Purina EN. Uh, and so the reason for that is a food that you can buy on the shelf. So you can go to Walmart, you can go to Costco, you can go on Chewy and you can purchase that food and it says sensitive skin or sensitive stomach on that, that bag. It's over the counter. Um, a prescription food such as Hills ID or um, Purina EN or one of those, they literally are prescriptions. And so... Um, when you have a food and that food is manufactured, it needs to meet certain parameters. And so those parameters are legal and they have been established from research. They are there to protect the consumer so that they know that these pet food companies are actually putting things in a food that for the most part is nutritionally adequate for, uh, for feeding. And so examples of that are going to be like um, the Purina 1, and they'll have a sensitive stomach. So they've got to meet certain parameters. There's a wide range. They can fall anywhere in there, and they're going to be safe for a pet to be a food. If they are not, they're going to be um, on the AFCO statement, something that'll say, you know, to the effect of for supplemental feeding or treating. And so I'll show you some examples of that. When you have a food that is a prescription, the reason it is a prescription and why you have to get a prescription from your veterinarian in order to feed it is it falls out of those parameters. And so the food is formulated outside of those parameters for pets that medically need something that is going to fall out of the acceptable range. And so that is the difference between a prescription diet and a over-the-counter diet that is meant for a sensitive skin or a sensitive stomach. And so the plain ones you can get OTC. They are in that range. They may be having a few things here or there that uh, maybe help with skin and stomach, but they still are in the accepted parameters. A prescription food is going to be super restricted for pets that have a medical necessity to be outside of that range. The other thing that goes along with prescription versus OTC diets, and this kind of has a lot to do with foods that are specific for, let's say, feeding trials for skin allergies, when you buy a food that is over the counter, that food can have a have a range. So it, they give ranges, it can fall anywhere in that range. There can be variation between bag and bag um, as long as it's in that range. When you have a food that is a prescription, it is very, very specific. It is like if you were to pick up a prescription of let's say your blood pressure medication. If you go to the pharmacy and you have a prescription for blood pressure, and let's say you need to get a five milligram blood pressure pill, that pill is prescription, it is FDA regulated, it must have five milligrams of that medication in it. Cannot be variation, it is that. That is the prescription, you need five milligrams, you're getting five milligrams. That is also the same with prescription pet food. Those foods are very consistent, they are prescriptions, so if it says it has this in there, it must have what they say 
in there as it is a prescription. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, the prescription diets are just very, 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 very heavily regulated so that what they say is in the bag must be in the bag because they are a prescription. So let's pull a few bags and see if we can illustrate this point just to kind of let it sit in there. All right, so let's see, let's just go here to the Purina One um, Natural Sensitive Stomach Dry Dog Food Smart Blend Sensitive Systems Formula. Okay, so we've done reviews on Purina One. It's a good food, we like it. It meets a lot of the things that we're looking for. And so this particular one is saying um, it's a sensitive systems formula. So I'm assuming they think that it's good for, or it's meant for dogs that have both skin and stomach um, sensitivities. Now, it is important to realize that with marketing, and we talk a lot about marketing on this channel, and for the most part, that's what this channel is about, the terms sensitive system or sensitive skin or sensitive stomach have zero legal definition. And so you can call a food sensitive skin and sensitive stomach, and it means literally nothing. Uh, so that is an important thing to realize that because it's not prescription, they can call anything they want sensitive skin, sensitive stomach. So number one, keep that in mind. All right, so let's go down to kind of the ingredient list and the guaranteed analysis and see what this is all about. So in the ingredients you have salmon, um, and I am going to focus on um, the protein sources because if you've watched our previous videos, we know that dogs with allergies are sensitive to the proteins. They're not allergic to um, the grains or the wheat and all that jazz. It is a protein. That is a fact. I did not make that up. That is well um, understood and well documented amongst veterinary um, dermatologists. And so um, we want to see if your pet technically has a food allergy, you're gonna want a limited ingredient um, protein source. And so let's go ahead and see what we've got here. So in the ingredients, you've got salmon, um, which is excellent, very good for a lot of dogs that have uh, food allergies. Um, we've got some grains and things like that, we're not worried about it, but then right here you see, we've got the chicken byproduct meal, you've got beef fat, you've got liver, um, you've got some more fish oil. So in this diet, which is supposed to be a sensitive system, you've already got multiple protein sources. So you've got salmon, you've got chicken, you've got beef. And so if your pet is allergic to those, this food doesn't matter that it says sensitive on it, this food is not gonna be sensitive for your pet. So that, that already is telling us that is not necessarily gonna be good for a pet that has a food allergy, which is manifesting as sensitive skin. Um, okay, so we're gonna find the guaranteed analysis because that's gonna be another thing when your pet has a sensitive stomach, a lot of things that dogs are sensitive to in their stomach is gonna be the fat content. So when a, when a food has too much fat or if your pet has been diagnosed with a condition that the GI is sensitive to fat, you're gonna need um, a very specific uh, profile for the fat. So for instance, um, dogs that have a history of pancreatitis. Pancreatitis pets tend to need to have a very low fat diet because that fat content is what spurs or what aggravates pancreatitis in dogs that have sensitive stomachs related to that. So let's see if we can't find the fat and the guaranteed analysis. Here. All right, let's go to the guaranteed amount analysis. So um, we've listed the protein, 26%, that's fine. Um, the next thing is what we're really looking for and that is the fat. So the crude fat minimum is at 16%, which is fine. Um, it is between 10 and 20, which is where we want the fat to be for a normal dog. But for comparison, let's go to a food that is a prescription sensitive stomach food. And we'll also go to a food that is a prescription um, skin food. So, okay, so here is the Hills um, prescription diet ID low fat. 
And so a veterinarian may prescribe your pet with a prescription low-fat diet if they have a history of a condition where fat is causing the GI upset. For instance, as I mentioned earlier, pancreatitis. So it is very common for a veterinarian to say that a pet that has had pancreatitis, that they need to be on a low-fat diet. And it's more than just a low-fat diet. It is a low-fat diet that is below the standards that are you know published and that regular dog foods need to um, adhere to and so if we go down um, to the guaranteed analysis for the prescription hills diet id low fat and we compare that to the established um, parameters you will see what i am talking about so here we've got protein is going to be 25%, um, which is normal. Um, the next ingredient is the fat. And so 7.7% fat. That is well below the typical fat level or the fat level that is um, required to be in a commercially produced diet. And so in order for them to make this diet, it must be a prescription. And it will be a prescription because that 7.7% does not meet the general population's requirement for fat. A lot of these other parameters are going to be are going to be fine. So let's see the phosphorus. Do I list the phosphorus on this one? They're not listing the phosphorus. The calcium at 0.76%. So um, you know that's fine. Sodium 0.32. That's fine. And so all the other things are going to be fine. But what makes this diet prescription is that it is below the necessary levels for general population for fat. Your veterinarian has to deem that your pet um, will need or needs for its optimal health this prescription. And so that's why it is prescription. We don't want anybody um, just going, you know, over the counter buying this food because for some pets, this may actually be deleterious. Okay, so that is the difference between a prescription GI food and an over the counter sensitive stomach food. Okay, so yeah. now to circle back around to the prescription skin diets versus the sensitive skin diets, such as the Purina. Um, Purina 1 sensitive skin. So the when we're talking about prescription diets for skin, um, what we are trying to accomplish is we want a diet that is so limited in its ingredients or how it is processed that there is no way that external or variations in the diet are going to happen such that it aggravates that pet's allergies. Um, one of the main ways that this is done in veterinary medicine is to put the food through a process um, that makes it what we call hydrolyzed. And so it's processed in such a way that the protein sources are hydrolyzed and changed such that it is not recognizable by the body. And so this process is what takes place with Hills ZD. Um, Hills ZD is a really common um, diet that veterinarians and veterinary dermatologists use for pets that have diagnosed food allergy. This process of hydrolyzing the protein makes it such that the body cannot recognize it as an allergen. Um, this process is a very specific process. Um, I have actually been to the plant where Hills makes the ZD diet. That diet is regulated so much that when I toured the facility, I had to wear a complete uh, getup. Uh, you have to take off any metal that you have. So if you have even glasses that have metal in them, you cannot take that in the plant. They, when they process the food ZD, it is processed in its own special place. The entire place is sterilized top to bottom so that no, 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 no particles of any other food can interact with this diet. And so it is processed, processed in such a way that no over-the-counter commercial diet can. And it is prescription because what they say is in that food 100% must be in that food, cannot be variations, cannot be deviations. And so because it is prescription, it is guaranteed to have that. So the Purina sensitive stomach or sensitive skin, you saw in there that it had um, the beef, the chicken, and the uh, pork. And so if you go to Hills ZD and you look at their ingredient list, 
the only thing you will find on here, the only protein source you will find on here is hy hydrolyzed chicken liver. They cannot slip anything else in here. And they won't slip anything else in here because it is prescribed that this is the way that it is. FDA regulates it. They cannot change. And so that is the difference between a prescription diet and an over-the-counter sensitive diet. And that's the reason why these prescription diets tend to be much more expensive because they have to follow very strict and very rigorous means in order for it to, to be qualified as a prescription. And so um, with that, I hope that answers your questions about the difference between over-the-counter products and prescription products in veterinary medicine. Um, that is why your, your veterinarian may prescribe something, prescribe a food to your pet. It's because your pet may need something that's out of the, the typical parameters that any pet can have. Um, and so I hope that was helpful. If you have any more questions about this, please feel free to ask me in the comments and I will see you guys next time. Bye.